Well, hi there. There are some reptiles in the reptile hobby that somehow have kind of fallen through the cracks. Some that, that come to mind for me are things like African fat-tailed geckos and this animal, which is the pink tongue skink. These two pink tongue skinks that are with me today actually come to us from Animal Ark in Orem, Utah. This one that's getting a little bit older is owned by Emily, who's an employee there, and this one uh, is still at the store and actually available right now, so, so we'll talk about later. They can be a little bit difficult to find. I know they've had this one there for a long time because most people don't know what a pink tongue skink is, so there's a chance it'll still be available even when this video gets out. You should contact them if you're looking for a pink tongue skink. But these guys show us something really cool about pink tongues. This one's a juvenile that's getting a little older, and when they're, when they're very young, they've got a very distinct banding pattern. And some of them will kind of maintain those bands, but you can see on this one that a lot of times they get a lot darker and kind of lose that banding pattern as they get older. And I kind of like the bands a lot, personally, but I think it's fun how much variation there is in pink tongue skinks. Even within a single litter of pink tongues, there can be just tons of different morphotypes that come out, and that's a blast. So if it wasn't enough to have a, a lizard that a lot of people haven't heard of, each individual can be pretty distinctive, and that is double rad. The top viewed video on all of YouTube about pink tongue skinks has 7,000 views and it's 12 years old. They've largely been overshadowed by their slightly larger cousins, the blue-tongued skink. And these do make spectacular, just absolutely fantastic pet lizards. But as it turns out, the almost invisible pink-tongued skink is an absolutely incredible lizard in its own right. They are, they're just wonderful. I mean, honestly, in a lot of ways, they're very, very, very similar to a blue tongue skink. They're a little bit smaller, which, you know, there's a lot to be said for that. That, that can be very, very convenient. They've, they've got some amazing features like this tail, which is semi prehensile, which is one of the coolest things in the world. They are just, and they're beautiful animals. They are pretty good at holding on. They're low keyed. They're really just absolutely incredible and it's amazing that they're so unknown in the reptile hobby. But it could be that there are very good reasons for which the pink tongue skink has been so overshadowed by their blue tongued cousins. And for this reason, we want to dive in a little bit deeper to the pink tongued skink to decide, is it a good pet lizard and is it the right pet lizard for you? And to do this, we're going to break down the pink tongue skink into our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the relatively unknown pink tongue skink a score of five out of five. Overall, this is one of the easiest pet lizards you could possibly keep. Honestly, this lizard is just absolute perfection to handle. They are very, very uninclined to bite, which is great. Uh, it's really great. They're also semi-arboreal, which means they spend a fair amount of time in the wild, kind of up in trees and climbing around, which generally means they're very good at holding on. Um, much better than a blue tongue skink, for example, which is more like handling a potato, and as long as you're holding it, it won't fall, but if you stop holding it, it's gonna fall right to the ground. You can see, I don't even need to use any fingers to hold on to this pink tongue skink. And one of my favorite features is this semi prehensile tail they've got that they can use as an anchor as well. I, I love me a prehensile tail and uh, they just make me happy. They're just the right size. This one's actually still growing. They get a little bit bigger than this, but, but smaller than most blueies and it's just, it's just kind of the perfect size for a lizard to handle. I mean, when you talk about great big lizards, like, like some of the larger monitors and iguanas and tegus, you know, those are animals that, I mean, you can pick them up, but even if they're not trying to hurt you, they're just going to shred you with their claws and things. And, and if you do 
or if they do want to hurt you, I mean, they're, they're real good at it. And then, you know, when you get to really small animals, a lot of times you could do them significant harm because they're just, they're very fragile because they're little. These guys are big enough to be robust, but small enough that they're not going to hurt you. It's just that perfect balance. On top of that, because of their small size and their relatively small legs, being a skink, most skinks are built like this, their claws aren't even going to tear you up. A lot of lizards, when you handle them, you know, even when they're not trying, their claws are tearing you up. And these claws, they're sharp. I mean, any climbing lizard has sharp claws, and you can feel them, but they're not going to do any, like, serious damage, and that's awesome. They are capable of dropping this tail, as far as I understand, but it sounds like they're extremely uninclined to do so, and that makes a lot of sense because they're using it to climb, and this isn't the kind of lizard that quickly scampers off like a lot of, say, North American skinks, and so dropping the tail is nowhere near as beneficial as it can be for other species of lizards. Honestly, when I say that this lizard is perfection to handle, I mean, look at the temperament on these guys. They're just, they're low key, they're the right size. They are perfection. They're perfection to handle. The biggest problem, honestly, with handling pink-tongued skinks is just that there's a temptation to overhandle them. I mean, you know, you could hold them probably all day and it would go fine for you. Uh, but after a while, that's going to take a toll on your skink. It's not going to be in the right, the right environment. And, you know, it can be a little scary. Just imagine if a giant was holding you all day long, how you'd feel about it. Even if you trusted that giant, you know, it'd be like, well, I hope at no point today uh, you decide to kill me or kill me on accident, because that could totally happen. And, uh, you know, that's something that you need to be aware of so that you don't stress your pink tongue skink excessively. Other than that, though, absolute perfection. And I'd just like to take a moment to give a shout out to all of our patrons at Patreon. Thank you guys so much. Well, hi there. How's it going, everyone? I'm Nate, this is Nigel, and I want to take a quick moment to talk to you a little bit about Clint's Patreon page. Now, I signed up with Patreon to support Clint because I genuinely believe that he is the best when it comes to everything from helping you discover your next pet to discussing controversial issues in the reptile world to even making you kind of want a pet spider. Maybe. But once I signed up with Clint, I found that there are all sorts of awesome extra videos and perks that go along with it. I even learned that Clint and his crew are just as entertaining off script as they are on script. So please everyone, go to Patreon and support Clint's Reptiles because our hobby, our shared passion, it needs great voices like this. Alright everyone, take care. Bye bye. What are you doing? Come on man. That's part of our way of saying thank you to all of our patrons. When it comes to care, we give the pink tongue skink a score of five out of five. One nice thing about pink tongue skinks is that they need a relatively cool environment. Uh, you know, still probably warmer than average home room temperature, but not super hot. Even their basking spot is fairly cool. And, and that makes them just a lot easier to keep than a lot of lizards that need a real, real hot basking spot. That's something I really like about them. Being a semi-arboreal lizard, they're gonna need places to climb and they're gonna need floor space because they will spend a lot of their time on the ground, but they'll also move up into branches and things like cork rounds that you might have in there. So you need to provide that kind of space for them, floor space and some vertical. They also are gonna benefit a lot from places to hide. And, you know, and so you can use traditional hides, also cork rounds. Those are fantastic because they provide a place for the skink to hide as well as climb. Just make sure there's nowhere inside of there it could get trapped. You know, a huge benefit to these guys because they're a little bit smaller than, say, the blue tongue skinks is that their enclosure needs to be large. And I mean, they'll, they would use a really large enclosure if you gave them one, but not nearly as big as a blue tongue enclosure, at least not in terms of floor space. A little bit more vertical space, though, would be appreciated. I would recommend keeping these guys alone. Uh, it is possible to keep them in a colony, but sort of like blue tongues, they tend to not like each other, and, and they can and will fight, especially two males, but even other groupings. I would recommend only putting them together if you're a breeder. You're going to want to give them some substrate that they can burrow into a little bit. It's not like it needs to hold a burrow, but they do like to dig. Stuff like cypress mulch or reptichip would be a great choice. They also can and must drink from a water bowl, so make sure clean water is always available to them in a water bowl they can access. UVB is a very, very good idea with these guys. There's some evidence to suggest that they can do all right without it, which a lot of lizards cannot. 
I would still recommend providing UVB with them. And, and the way that I would do it is I would use a low wattage mercury vapor bulb. That way it's both your heat bulb and your UV. Sometimes a, a mercury vapor bulb alone isn't enough UV, but it probably is for these guys and that's awesome. They're also ridiculously easy to feed. Uh, in the wild, one of their favorite foods are gonna be snails, and they'll gladly take snails in captivity. Just make sure that you get your snails from a, a clean source, because snails can carry all kinds of horrors that you don't want to introduce to your lizard. So I wouldn't use wild snails or anything like that. If you're gonna feed them snails, use them farm-raised snails intended to be fed to animals. Just when you are feeding them, Make sure that you give them quite a bit of calcium. They also need other vitamin supplements, but especially calcium. Being a snail specialist in the wild, they get a lot of calcium, and so they're they're used to that. So make sure you're, you're dusting their meals regularly with calcium. They will also eat things like the San Diego Zoo diet, uh, all kinds of feeders like earthworms and insects, and they'll eat some fruit and veggies. Pretty much, if you can get a reptile, any sort of reptile to eat it, there's a pretty good chance that a pink tongue skink will give it a shot. And we'll have links to all these things down in the description. When it comes to hardiness, we give the pink tongue skink a score of five out of five. I'm starting to detect a pattern here. One of the great things about them is, generally speaking, they are all captive bred and we, we have a whole video on the benefits of captive bred over wild caught imports or even farm, farm raised. It's just better. They also come from a fairly tough environment in the wild, and as a result, they are just tough as nails. They basically eat everything that anything eats, so, I mean, uh, giving them a wide diversity of things. For the most part, if you keep your pink tongue skink at the right temperatures and avoid things like dehydration, just the stuff that can kill anything, they're probably gonna thrive for you. When it comes to availability, for the first time, the pink tongue skink loses some points. We give them a score of two out of five. And, and this is largely just because they're sort of the unknown alternative to the blue tongue skink. They're out there, but you're gonna have to look to find one. They're all captive bred, which I said is a good thing, it's a great thing, but it means that you're gonna need to find a breeder, and there just aren't that many of them. You know, not that many people even know to be keeping these or breeding these, so there just aren't that many. But, once you can find one, you got it made in the shade. And, and, and since they are a, a nearly perfect pet lizard in ever so many ways, you know, those, those few breeders out there, they're, they're gonna be in somewhat high demand. And so actually, this would be a breeding project I would strongly encourage if you know anything about breeding skinks. Breeding pink tongues makes some sense. I think they're, they've got the potential to be a very big thing if they ever get out of the shadow of the blue tongue skink. Mainly, the best place to find them will be online straight from breeders, but also, I mean, they will be at expos every now and then if you've got a really good reptile pet shop near you, they might get one in. Like, they're out there. Um, it's just that they're not everywhere. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the totally bodacious pink tongue skink a score of three out of five. The lizard itself is actually fairly spendy. I mean, they're really right in the neighborhood of a captive bred blue tongue skink, so not, not crazy expensive, but captive bred blue tongue skinks are kind of crazy expensive, so they're expensive, but not out of this world. Everything else you're gonna need for them is really not too bad. You know, the enclosure that they need, you know, it, it, the bigger the better, but it doesn't need to be insanely large, and that means it's fairly affordable. You can potentially get an enclosure that's really, really cheap. I'd recommend one that's front opening and just easier to deal with. You know, it's, it's really not that big of an expense, but it, it could be extremely inexpensive for the enclosure. They're gonna need climbing branches and cork rounds and a water bowl and hides and just kind of normal stuff like substrate. They, they need all of these things, you'll need to buy those. Uh, one of the bigger expenses is gonna be a, a lamp, and uh, like I said, I'd recommend a mercury vapor bulb. And again, all this stuff is down in the description. Uh, that's one of the bigger expenses that you'll need, and you'll need to replace that bulb every now and then. But all this stuff adds up, but it doesn't add up to a ton. Really, the most expensive part, at least individual thing, is just gonna be the lizard itself. All in all, though, you'll probably end up spending less on your pink tongue skink in its enclosure than you would on a blue tongue skink in its enclosure, so. You know, this could be a cheaper alternative, even though they're a little bit hard to find. And that is why, overall, 
The Pink Tongue Skink earns a score of 4 out of 5, and in case you've wondered how we calculate that score, that overall score is just the average of the five categories. And so, you know, really when you're deciding if this is the right lizard for you, the most important thing is for you to figure out which of those categories are most important to you and, and check those individual scores. Interestingly enough though, that score of four out of five is actually a higher score than we gave to the blue tongue skink, even though these are less well known and maybe a little bit harder to find. If you want to see why the Blue Tongue Skink lost even more points, I mean, we do have a full video on them, and they are stinking rad, one of the best pet lizards you could possibly get, for real. I mean, uh, it's hard for me to recommend a lizard more highly, but here we are. In many ways, though, these are very similar to just a slightly smaller Blue Tongue Skink. They're just, like I said, a little bit smaller and a little bit more unusual. And those can totally be pros, but they could also possibly be, be cons for you. It just depends on who you are. Whether or not they're better than the blue tongue skink, which it's hard to be better than a blue tongue skink, but they might be. But either way, this is absolutely a spectacular pet lizard and phenomenally underrated. I mean, this is arguably the best pet skink you can get, and that's insane because skinks are so rad. We've actually got a whole skink playlist, and I strongly encourage that you go through the whole thing because they're all amazing. I love skinks so much. They're, they're right up there with monitors and tegus as maybe my favorite group of lizards. I just love them. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. If handling a blue tongue is like handling a potato, what is handling a pink tongue like? It's like handling a potato that holds on. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had that sensation. <laughs> yeah, me either. <laughs> That's the only thing it can be likened to, though. They're real cool. One rule, Jason. Yeah, we have one, one rule. rule. At least it was vibrate, not otherwise. Can you pin his hair? No, this. Pen. I, I'm happy. I've got a free hand to if you... pen your hair. I know Jason's wave. Oh, nice. Right? It's looking good. It's all in the pen. <laughs> Do I need to fix your hair? Yeah, evidently? pen me. Okay. <laughs> pen me. Let's have some croissants. Ha <laughs> ha. like a goat. Have you seen a goat do that? Flop its tongue like that? <laughs> you love that tongue. I, I can't. I don't know why that's... <laughs> well, I don't know why that's such a big deal. Like, people are like, they're trademarked pink tongue. I'm like, isn't basically everything? Everything has a pink tongue. Has a pink tongue. <laughs> the four-legged skink. <laughs> You, this is perfect, like your frame is basically just this, including your yawn. <laughs> <laughs>